Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 28 December 2019. I am Sagar Nandi. I used to work in IT, mostly based in Singapore. I retired several years ago. Now I am living in Thailand. Swing trading stocks. I use the Q trading systems and techniques. You can find this and other videos in my YouTube channel Trading Profitably. This is my email ID tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I regularly share stock analysis both for the USA market as well as the India market in my traders forum sagarnandi.com and also on my Twitter page sagarnandi. All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Before I begin, let me go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual in today's topics, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts that tend to impact related stocks. Then I will demonstrate the use of the 360 degrees analysis where you can align the market level, sector level, fundamental and technical strengths. You can align all of them in your trades favor giving you truly high probability low risk trades. That was the last slide of the presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I begin my commodities analysis with the oil ETF USO. I am looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and the daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this single template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds using one of the Q trade setups. In the previous market roundup I mentioned that oil was inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart bound by the resistance memory trend line at the top, support, memory trend line at the bottom. This week price broke out of the memory trend line that is bullish. This week's backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish. In the daily chart, price is going up. It is supported by a memory support line. It is bullish, however, it is close to the upper boundary level and it is overbought. Therefore, I will not suggest buying oil ETF right now. It also displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal on Friday. Friday ended in a doji shaped candle. Though the bearish headwind appeared, there was no headwind short trade setup because the weekly candle shape is bullish and the weekly color is also bullish. What to do in such a situation? If you are holding a long position, you may apply trailing stop but no need to exit the trade. You may avoid taking any new swing trade in oil right now. After 
oil I analyze the gold ETF GLD this week we have a very bullish shape candle in the weekly chart and the weekly backdrop color is also bullish in the daily chart earlier it was inside a triangle pattern on Tuesday it broke out of the triangle pattern with a gap up open and after that it went up if you wanted to take a long position in gold when could you take it you could take it on Tuesday right after the open using a gap long day trade setup you would initiate the trade using intraday real time fine tune chart template as price closed right near the high of the day you could probably book some profit and then continue to hold the remaining position with the trailing stop and that would result in even higher profit as price went up on Thursday and Friday Friday ended with a doji shape candle it is significantly above the upper boundary level and it is overbought therefore if you didn't take a long position on Tuesday using a breakout trade setup it may be too late to take a long trade in gold right now breakout is one of the trade setups that I use however that is not the only trade setup I use multiple trade setups and I use scans to look for trading candidates I have set up the scans for the long opportunities as well as for the shorting opportunities I can scan for an exhaustion based bound trade setup a sideways market box trade setup a breakout trade setup you could identify the gold breakout trade setup on Tuesday using this scan trend following go with flow trade setup and also trend reversing headwind trade setup the same scans are also available to identify shorting opportunities I run these scans on lists of stocks that I have created if I am looking for option trades then I may run them on a list of stocks that have very liquid options if I am looking for stock trades then I may run the scans on a larger list of stocks for example the S&P 1500 constituents you may create your own list as well GLD was not the only instrument related to gold that gave a breakout trade setup I shared a breakout trade setup in a gold mining stock earlier in my traders forum let me review that trade setup this is my traders forum sagarnandi.com I shared the trade idea on the gold miner SSRM I can search for that post this was the post I shared it one month ago on November 29 that time GLD didn't break out yet however this gold miner broke out and I shared the 360 degrees analysis at that time before knowing the result of the trade at that time I noticed that the gold mining industry was one of the strongest industries earlier it was weak and then it started to strengthen next I check the fundamentals of SSRM it had a short squeeze potential and it had excellent 
earnings growth in the last three quarters. On the day that I shared the trade idea in the PR group, six stocks were up and only one stock was down. Fundamentally, this stock allowed me to take a long trade. The last step would be to look for a technical trade setup. This is how the chart looked like at that time. The weekly backdrop candle color and shape both were strongly bullish. In the daily, you can see at that time, it broke out of the triangle pattern, broke out of the memory resistance trend line with a bullish color and shape daily candle that gave a breakout trade candidate. The relative performance was also strong showing it was outperforming the market. That was on 29th November. How did the stock move after that? Let's check it out. This is SSRM as of Friday's market close. I shared the trade idea in this area. After that, the stock went up. It covered more than risk distance by this day and you could book at least partial profit and you could continue to hold partial position trying to let profit run. After that price went up further giving you even higher profit in the trade. Now price is far above the upper boundary line that is to extend it to take a long trade. If you look back you can see that I could identify the breakout trade at the perfect time just when it was breaking out of the triangle pattern that was there in the chart at that time. You could identify this breakout trade using the breakout scan that I showed earlier. This was another example of a 360 degree trade, a trade where you could align the industry strength, fundamental strength and technical strength together and once again this 360 degree trade ended with a considerable profit. After commodities analysis, I continue with the market level analysis. What is the aim? The aim is to see if the market is bullish and if so, look for only long trades in stocks. If the market is bearish, then look for only short trades. How is the market this way? In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color is bullish. Shape also you can say is bullish. In the daily, it is continuing to go up. Price is above the upper boundary level. It is bullish but to extend it. Overbought in the daily chart. Overbought in the weekly chart. On Friday, it displayed a possible reversal signal. What to do in such a situation? There is no short trade setup and there is no long trade setup also. It's too late to take a long trade in SPY now. If you have a long position, you may apply a trailing stop to protect your profit. That is because the headwind signal has shown up. You remember that the headwind signal appeared in the oil ETF, USO as well. It appeared on USO, it appeared on SPY and you will see it appeared on other market ETFs as well. NASDAQ ETF QQQ 
a picture similar to that of SPY. SPY made a new all-time high this week. So did QQQ. The weekly backdrop color and shape both are bullish. The relative performance shows that it is outperforming the market. In the daily, price is above upper boundary level. Overbought in the daily chart, overbought in the weekly chart. On Friday, it displayed the bearish headwind possible reversal signal. Dow Jones Industrial Average Dia. It also made a new all-time high. The weekly backdrop color and shape both are bullish. Though it is underperforming the market shown by the relative performance line tilting downward. Daily went up. It is at the upper boundary level. Overbought in the daily and the weekly charts. On Friday, it displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is different from how SPY, QQQ, and DIA looked like. To start with, the weekly backdrop color is not bullish, not cyan, and the weekly shape is also not bullish, it is indecisive. In fact, price closed a little bit below previous week's close though not much. In the daily, it is near the upper boundary level. It is not overbought anymore. It displayed the stretch release signal. IWM didn't display the headwind possible reversal signal in the daily chart. However, it displayed another bearish indication on Friday. That is, it created a reversal candle as shown by the reversal band indicator that came at pendulum or price extreme high. That completes the market level analysis. Let's come to a conclusion and also compare it with what I analyzed in the previous market roundup whose video is available on my YouTube channel trading profitably. In the previous market roundup, I analyzed the market to be bullish. Everything was bullish. All the market ETFs went up. The shapes were bullish. Colors were also bullish for all the market ETFs. This week, the market is bullish, but not so much as the previous week. Why? Because in the weekly chart, IWM didn't go up and its color turned neutral yellow. And also because on Friday, SPY, QQQ and DIA, all these three ETFs displayed the bearish headwind possible reversal signal and IWM displayed a reversal candle at pendulum or price extreme high. Market is bullish. It is extended and on Friday there are some bearish indications. In such a situation, I will probably pause taking new long trades and start to look for possible reversal shorting candidates. We can gather more information about the market's health from the sector level analysis. Sector performance analysis. Here I am looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. Last five days, five days prior to that and then two weeks prior to that. This week, seven sectors went up and four went down that is bullish however not as bullish as the previous week where 10 sectors went up and only one sector went down prior to that over the two weeks period sectors were bullish again 
we can see that the sectors are bullish this week but little bit less bullish than the previous week. The same conclusion that I arrived at from the market level analysis. Which one is the strongest sector? Energy, by far. It went up by 1.5% this week and by much higher percentages in the previous review periods. Looking at that, other traders, those who are not using the queue systems, may be rushing to buy energy stocks now. However, that may be a bit too late. Using sector rotation analysis, I could identify energy sector turning up several weeks ago and I shared that in the weekly market roundups. Why did I say it may be a bit too late to buy energy stocks now? You will see that when I carry out the sector rotation analysis. Let's look at the one-week sector performance also. Over five days, as I showed just now, seven sectors went up, four went down. However, on Friday, only three went up and eight went down. Therefore, though over weekly period, the sectors are bullish, on Friday, sectors were bearish. Let's focus on the energy sector. Over five day period, it is the best performing sector. However, over two day period, it is one of the weakest, as weak as healthcare sector. Over two day period, healthcare and energy are the weakest. And over one day period, that is Friday, energy is the weakest. From this one week sector performance, you can see energy weakening from 5 day period to 2 day period to 1 day period. That is why I said that it may be a bit too late to rush into energy stocks now. Instead, if you bought energy stocks when I showed that energy sector was turning around, you could start to book profit or at least apply trailing stock. Another look at the sectors using the sector rotation scorecard and heat map. This clearly shows the sector rotation over a long period of time from 5 day period to 12 monthly periods. Cyan represents strength, magenta represents weakness. You can see the sectors rotating into strength or into weakness clearly from this heat map. If you follow my weekly market roundup, then you know that normally I look at the 5 day period to decide where to buy. However, as I showed on Friday, there were multiple bearish indications in terms of bearish headwinds in SPY, QQQ and DIA, a bearish reversal at the price extreme high in IWM. Looking at that, for this week, I am not going to focus on the 5 day period but expand the more recent periods, 2 day, 1 day and 0 day, that is the Friday. Now, the market is closed, so one day and zero day period show the same score. On Friday, which sectors were strongest? Real estate, utilities, consumer staples. And only three sectors went up. So these were the three sectors that went up. All of these were in defensive areas. If you remember my last market roundup, I suggested looking for buying opportunities in consumer staples. At that time, I suggested buying in consumer staples because the sector was strong and it was also accelerating. 
that was useful probably because consumer staples is now one of the only three sectors that went up. My market level analysis conclusion was that I am not going to look for new long trades now. Instead, I am going to look for possible shorting opportunities. Where may I look for them? I may look for them in energy, materials and healthcare. In fact, I shared possible shorting ideas, both in healthcare and materials in the Traders Forum and also on Twitter page. Let me review those suggestions. Let me start with the healthcare sector shorting idea. This was the post. I shared it two days ago on December 26th. A case for putting trailing stop on the biotech ETF. At least putting a trailing stop on the biotech ETF. As usual, I shared the 360 degree snapshot as of that time. Healthcare was stronger earlier. When I shared the post, it weakened and became the weakest sector right on that day. And it was also the most decelerating sector. That prompted me to look for a shorting candidate in the healthcare sector. Then I looked at all the healthcare industries and found biotech to be the weakest. The sector was the weakest of all sectors and then biotech was the weakest industry in that sector. Biotech was stronger earlier. Biotech was also the most decelerating industry in the healthcare sector. That led me to look for a possible shorting candidate in the biotech industry. And instead of looking at any individual stock, I found a possible shorting idea in the biotech ETF XBI. Why? Because it displayed the bearish headwind signal at the very top price extreme high. And the weekly backdrop color turned yellow. That made all the requirements of a headwind reversal trade setup. Remember, headwind is a reversal trade setup. Therefore, it is expected that the price would be still moving upward. And we are using the headwind setup to try to take a shot at the very top, which stop just above the recent high. If the price drops, as it often happens when the headwind trade setup appears, it gives a large profit relative to the risk taken in the trade. How did XBI end up? Let's look at the chart as of Friday's market close. The weekly has now turned more bearish. Color is neutral. That was a requirement for the bearish headwind trade setup. Now the shape is also bearish. I shared the shorting idea on this day before market close around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On that day, price closed at the very low of the day and next day, price moved down further. When I suggested the shorting idea, I took a short trade in XBI. I used what you can call a Dr. Jeffrey shorting instrument. I learned it from Dr. Jeffrey. I used short call vertical and I added a put to that. You can also think of it as a synthetic short stock that is buy put 
short a call at the same strike and then buy a protective call further out of the money. As of Friday's market close, I have more profit in the trade than the risk amount. I could probably book partial profit and then hold on to the remaining position trying to let profit run. That was the shorting idea I shared in the healthcare sector. Now I will look at the possible shorting idea in the material sector. This is the materials sector shorting idea FCX. When I shared it, at that time it didn't have any standard Q short trade setup. However, it was looking weak. When did I share it? I shared it on Friday in the morning half, 11.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. How did the stock look like? In the weekly, it couldn't go up for three weeks. Though the backdrop color and shape both were bullish. Because the backdrop color and shape both were bullish, that is why it didn't meet all the requirements for the bearish headwind short trade setup. The headwind signal appeared in the daily chart as of 11.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That was the scan that I used to identify this stock. It gave a bearish headwind signal in the daily chart and it was also breaking below the memory support trend line. Therefore, you could identify the trade using the short headwind scan. You could also identify using the short breakout scan. How did the stock move after that? This is FCX as of Friday's close. The weekly color remained bullish cyan though the shape is now indecisive. And we can see the breakout confirmed at the end of Friday. The headwind signal also confirmed. Let's look at some other factors that might influence your decision on FCX. I showed that material sector was weakening and it was decelerating as well. Let's drill down into its industries. Sort by Friday and you will see copper is one of the weakest industries in the material sector. And if you look at the base column, it was the most decelerating in material sector. FCX belongs to copper industry. That could also support your shorting decision. That was not all. If you look at the copper futures, AG, you could see that on Friday that also displayed a bearish headwind signal because the material sector was weak, copper industry was weak, copper futures displayed the headwind reversal signal. Those factors could give you a little bit more confidence in looking for a short trade in FCX which is a copper industry stock. The very scheduling trade setup in FCX didn't confirm on Friday. If the stock goes down next week, maybe on Monday, you may look for a low risk shorting opportunity using the intraday real time fine tune chart. Let me summarize. In the previous market roundup, I put the picture of a bull here because my analysis showed that everything was bullish. Market ETFs were bullish, sectors were bullish, everything was bullish. This week, 
the five day period is bullish however on friday i found several bearish indications the bearish headwinds not only in the three market etfs spy qqq dia but also in ueso also in copper futures and the reversal candle in iwm you also saw that the sectors were bearish on friday only three sectors went up and those were all defensive sectors that is leading me to pause taking new long trades and i may start to look for shorting ideas because the market made new all time high this week spy qqq dia made new all time highs the shorting opportunities will probably not be trend following shorting opportunities but reversal setups you might scan for headwind short setup breakout short setup or box setup or maybe even bounce short setup i identified several such shorting ideas and shared them in the traders forum and on the twitter page and i identified them in the weakest sectors the materials and healthcare sectors whatever be the market condition using this 360 degrees approach you can look for trades where the market sector industry fundamental and technical forces are all aligned that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in my next session that will be in the new year wish you a very happy new year 2020 have a great week and trade profitably